Hi, and welcome to the next section here in our um, chapter on evolutionary algorithms. So this is on the CMAAS algorithm. So this is short for covariance matrix, adapt, um, covariance matrix adaptation um, evolutionary strategy. So it's called an evolutionary strategy because it uh, um, is mainly geared towards working with real value vectors. And it's called covariance matrix adaptation because it uses an estimation of distribution template algorithm in the background which works with a multivariate Gaussian and where one of the major operations is adapting its covariance matrix but before I explain that I guess it makes sense to start from the beginning which I will do exactly now. So um, like I said the CMAAS um, uses a general rule principle um, which is a bit different than what we have uh, discussed before. So this is called an estimation of distribution algorithm. So an estimation of distribution algorithm e or EDA for short works a bit differently. So it doesn't really maintain a population of candidates. It rather maintains a sampling distribution. So a multivariate distribution on our input space. And this multivariate distribution is well, as always parameterized by a vector Call that theta here. And this sampling distribution is used to generate offsprings. Again, we would call them lambda. These lambda offsprings will reduce to a smaller number and that we might call mu um, and kind of associate with the population or population size. But these um, mu values uh, that we are, uh, or these, these mu candidates are then immediately kind of thrown away and used to adapt our sampling distribution and hopefully move this closer and closer and closer to the area of our, um, yeah, where kind of the optimal um, values um, in decision space lie. Yeah? So we hopefully move our sampling distribution, um, yeah, we, we locate this uh, and shift it and distort it towards well-performing areas of the decision space. So I think this also um, becomes clearer if we now directly look uh, at the CMA as, as an example. So um, as before, um, I've already explained the name. Yeah? So covariance matrix adaptation evolution strategy. It's pretty much state of the art. So, but in order for it to really uh, to, to get the state of the art performance, you have to do a bit more than the vanilla algorithm that I'm explaining here in the first part. So I'll wrap this up with the second part. Um, and at least outline all of the missing components that we couldn't cover yet here. Um, I've told you it's mainly geared towards uh, continuous domains. It's an estimation of distribution algorithm and it usually works well in nonlinear, non-vex um, regimes um, where methods like quasi-Newton techniques like BFGS or conjugate gradients and so on fail because we have this non-convex and, and rugged search landscape. Um, um, if you are interested more um, in the details of the algorithm, yeah, we have linked um, pretty popular and um, well-known tut tutorials by the main author of the CMA as uh, 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 Nikolaus Hansen. So let's start. So um, I guess actually, um, to be honest, uh, I might skip ahead one or two slides to make this very, very, very concrete. So. Like I said, we have a sampling distribution in the background. In the case of the CMA, yes, this is a multivariate Gaussian. So we all know that a multivariate Gaussian can be parameterized by a mean vector. I will simply call this M here. And we have a covariance matrix, which I will call capital C. Now, if we have such a sampling distribution, we can sample our offspring from that sampling distribution. So far, so simple. And um, in the beginning, we can assume that this sampling distribution here um, is simply um, of isotropic structure. So maybe this simply has the identity matrix uh, as our capital C, because we don't know anything about our problem um, in the beginning. Now, I will write down the sampling from the distribution in a kind of slightly elongated different form. So I'll write this down as using our mean vector and then adding in sigma times a random vector sampled from a zero mean Gaussian 
with C covariance structure. So the reason for this is because I want to kind of adapt the, I mean, this is obviously equivalent by sampling from uh, this guy here, right? So I guess I have to put the sigma squared in here. So if I would, could have also said I can sample from that guy and I kind of could have hidden the sigma squared even in the arbitrary C here. So why do I write it down like that? Because I want to individually adapt the M. I want to individually adapt the C and the sigma. And the sigma we can also kind of see as the step size, right? Because the larger that guy is, the more variation we uh, create and the larger we can kind of move away from our mean vector. But this will become clearer in a few seconds. So at the moment, just see this as kind of as, as, as a longish fashion to write down um, the direct sampling from this guy. So in the beginning, um, we have our initial dis distribution here. Maybe even our mean vector is zero. Uh, um, and this guy here is zero mean anyway. So um, um, we pick some initial setting of sigma and we sample from this. Um, so maybe we, um, um, I'm not sure why we have uh, seven, seven points here that might be, I don't know, kind of a typo in the, um, in the plot. So um, we sampled six offsprings. Um, maybe, I don't know, disregard one of these guys. Um, we sampled six of these offspring and we now reduce them to the best half, okay? Which would be these guys here. Okay, so, well, I guess in order for us to reduce them to the best half, we need to evaluate all of them. And then we rank them, we reduce them to the best half. And I will now compute one intermediate variable. So the intermediate variable is the center. So simply the, um, um, the sum of these guys here. Well, I guess not the average, but the sum. And um, if I would divide this by one, if I would divide this by mu equals three, um, this would be the center. And I guess geometrically we could um, kind of envision this. Um, and I will call this uh, summation variable here y. Um, the first thing I will now do is I will use that y variable to adapt my mean. So this is pretty simple. So I take the current mean vector and I simply add in my step size um, times um, the new um, mean vector, okay? So which means I go from this direction here um, a bit um, towards the center of these guys, okay? Um, and this is a fairly simple operation. So this, um, I mean, ge geometrically, I hope this is clear. We are shifting um, the center of our sampling distribution a bit towards the center of the uh, well-performing half of the elements that we have sampled. Now, the covariance matrix adaptation, yeah, so the update of our C guy is a little bit more complicated. Um, so this is created by um, doing a convex combination. So we take our old covariance matrix uh, and then times times a factor, I don't know, times 80% and then plus 20% in new matrix. And this new matrix is a rank one matrix. So we take our vector y times y transpose. Hopefully that's obvious that this gives rise to a d-dimensional um, d times d dimensional matrix. And this is obviously only rank one, right? So yeah, because it's a vector times a vector. It's also obvious, I hope, how the um, eigenspectrum of that new matrix looks like. It only has one eigenvector and the eigenvector is y. And this is exactly this movement here, uh, this direction vector towards the center of these well-performing points. You can easily check that, right? So if you are C, if this you, if, if this is your C matrix, right? Um, you can check that Y is an eigenvector of that matrix uh, because you can simply multiply this times I and then this uh, kind of reorder terms a bit. So this is Y times this scalar value here, right? So I don't know, you can call that, I'm not sure I want to call it Lambda now because we've used Lambda um, for so many other things. So this is Y times the scalar value here. So you can see your covariance matrix this matrix here, uh, this partial covariance matrix times y is again y times the scalar value. So y is an eigenvector of this guy 
And it's also the only eigenvector of that guy because this is a rank one, one matrix. And geometrically, this means that you take the kind of eigenvector spectrum of your original matrix and you mix it um, in a sense that the eigenvectors are kind of distorted in a sense that this new direction vector here is represented a bit more strongly in the new eigenspectrum, right? So this, the matrix, the contour lines get distorted in such a fashion that this principal new direction is featured more strongly in the resulting uh, eigenvector spectrum of this new matrix C1 here. Yeah? So we elongate this uh, more kind of, yeah, uh, um, kind of pull in a certain sense, pull the eigen, eigenvector spectrum towards this uh, major direction here. I've um, skipped over one part, and this is when I said that this auxiliary variable y here um, is computed as, as this sum. So I have these weights in there. Um, usually these are set to exactly one. Um, in many implementations and you can also use kind of a, a weighted sum here which gives higher weights um, to elements of higher fitness and uh, to have them represented or to have them have more um, to have them have a stronger influence on the calculation of this y variable but in many implementations uh, this is simply set to, to, to a constant one so they have all uniform and equal weight and to keep it simple um, uh, um, let's just assume that here um, let's check all of the slides before um, that we have covered everything. Um, yeah, this is kind of just a different visualization um, that we covered before. We've discussed our notation here. So M is our mean vector. Sigma is our step size. We haven't discussed that too much. I'll do this in a few uh, minutes. C is our covariance matrix. Lambda is the number of offsprings we sample. Um, mu we use for the amount we reduce to after ranking. And I guess the rest we have covered so far. And we've explained how we update the M, we have explained how we update the C. Um, I haven't really explained how we update the Sigma. Here you have everything in pseudocode on one slide. It also gives you a default um, for this um, um, mixing coefficient here for the uh, adaptation of the covariance C matrix. Um, yeah, um, and what else do we need? We have to talk a little bit about um, step size control. So I'll keep this fairly short. So there are like two general ways of uh, handling these step sizes here in, in, in general evolution strategies. So one is the one fifth success rule. So this increases the step size if more than 20% of the new solutions are successful. Otherwise, we decrease the step size and kind of enforce more not sure I want to say local exploration, local, trying to locally exploit further. And we have seen a similar principle going on also in the Nelda meat algorithm. There's also a more complicated scheme, more complicated general scheme, which is sigma self adaptation. So this includes the step size in the encoding and then applies mutation, maybe even cross over to this. Um, um, yeah, and this is sometimes also called um, yeah, a star operation. And in um, the CMA, as we usually do path lens con control via cumulative step size adaptation. So I have not covered this here in the slide set. Um, so there's a specialized uh, adaptation strategy going on for CMA, as which works fairly well. You can also see here on this plot uh, the influence um, of um, um, yeah, pretty um, vanilla step size. Um, um, CSA a step size control and optimal step size and you can see that uh, C CSA is pretty effective and robust if your lambda is not too large.